G'day guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you enjoy today's episode, and with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and let's get right into it. Cheers. Posted by user Anomaly19, titled, My Mother Ruined My Bachelorette Trip. So, a few months back, I had a bachelorette trip to Puerto Rico. Two of my bridesmaids were able to go, and my mother and sister came as well. I asked my mum to be the maid of honour since I thought it would help create a closer bond between us getting ready for the wedding. My whole goal was to have everyone get along and just have a good time. I should have known that this was going to be a disaster. A couple of weeks before the wedding, my mother started bashing all of my bridesmaids and friends. She was particularly focused on one that was actually going on the trip. I ended up paying for my mum, sister, and my own flight to help the burden of my mum having to pay for both her and my sister. The plan was that my mother was going to pay for both her and my sister's hotel. My friend reached out to everyone to try and plan something for me without me getting involved. I would like to add that I planned the bachelorette trip as the bride. When my friend reached out to my mum and called her, she wanted to help as much as she could. My friend is actually Puerto Rican, so she was going to be a huge help with this trip. At the time, I did not know about this call. My mother called me at 3am after having that call with my friend that day to tell me that she's not been doing her maid of honor duties because she was observing everyone and everything. She then said as the maid of honor, she should be planning the bachelorette trip. I found this conversation odd, but I said, okay. I was relieved that she finally stepped up to help me with the trip. My mom did say before the call ended to not tell my friend that she talked to me about this, which is why I did find it odd as well. The next day, my friend called me and told me that she wanted to make sure that I had a great bachelorette, that to remember, it is all about me. She wanted to help me with the excursions that I wanted to do, and I told her that my mom wanted to plan as well so that they could work together. I saw my mother the next day, and she went on a rant about how my friend was disrespectful and said that she was not letting a little girl control her on this trip and made it seem like something was wrong with my friend, and how she did not want to wear her stupid t-shirts during the trip. She started raging and telling me she doesn't want to go in the rental car with my friend and wants to take an Uber. Her words were, your friend is disrespectful and I will beat this female dog's ass. This automatically started stressing me out. She said she didn't like my friend and she was disrespectful and has mental issues. I ended up calling my friend and asking her if she could cancel the rental and she said she could not. I created a group chat for the ones attending the trip and my friend was asking questions about what activities we were going to do and how excited she was and my mom and sister were instantly annoyed. My mom was supposed to plan the activities that we were going to do in Puerto Rico. She refused to let my friend do it or participate in helping, and again, my friend is Puerto Rican. Fast forward to the first day of the bachelorette trip. When we arrive, my mom's luggage was missing that had all of her toiletries. She was upset about it. When we got to the hotel, I let everyone rest since it was an early flight. My friend got there a little later in the day, and I met up with her and my other friend in the lobby. I called my mum and sister to meet us downstairs so that we could go with them to replace the toiletries that were lost and to have dinner. As me and my two friends were waiting, my mum came downstairs and stood behind my Puerto Rican friend and said hi to her so low that she could not hear her. I hinted to her that my mum was standing over and behind her while she was sitting on the lobby couch, which I thought was weird. She turned around and said hello. My mom instantly just said, Okay, I'm leaving now. Go be with your friends. She literally ran off. My sister did not say a word. Trust me, when I tell you the energy was so off that you could cut the tension in the air with a knife. I asked my friend what was going on with her and my mom because something just felt really off. She told me that she didn't really know her, so she didn't understand why. So I decided to just go to the bar with my friends and wait for my mum and sister to get back. Five minutes later, I get a text from my mum saying, Shame on you. You betrayed your family. You chose a nobody over your own family. I am disappointed and your sister and I are out of the wedding. I responded and said that I did not and asked what the problem was, but I was then ignored. I started crying hysterically because I did not want my bachelorette to be like this. My friends tried to cheer me up and took me out to dinner. 
I decided to let things cool off and try to smooth things over in the morning with my mum and sister. I went to my mum and sister's room and I knocked on the door several times and kept going back to knock on the door. I also called each of them and got no answer. I even waited around the lobby to see if I ran into them and nothing. I called both of them again later in the afternoon and finally my sister picked up. I asked if they were okay and if we could squash whatever happened and then just move forward with plans. I asked why didn't they answer me for hours and they said that they were sleeping, which I knew was a lie because I heard someone look through the peephole when I knocked earlier. My sister said they are not doing any of the activities that I wanted to do and that they were having lunch and would not tell me where they were. I felt like shit. My mom planned nothing that she said she was going to plan. My friend even texted and reached out to my mom and apologized for whatever my mom thought she did and called my mom and she did not answer. My friends all scrambled to try to make the best of the rest of the trip for me while my mom and sister were MIA. The day before we had to leave and go home, my sister reached out to get their plane tickets which I had purchased. I sent it to them and was immediately upset. My mom asked me to put my credit card down for her in my sister's hotel and then said that she would pay me back. I honestly think that she had no intention of paying me back because she is my mother. They ignored me during the entire trip and now demanded their plane tickets. I decided to change my flight and leave earlier. I couldn't sit on the plane with my mom and sister and then act like this was normal. My sister called and asked if I was going to get an Uber to the airport and I told her no, I have a different flight. My mum finally appeared and called me and said so many hurtful things. My mum told me that I was always disloyal, how I interpreted everything wrong, I overthink, I don't care about her and my sister, how I was feeling is wrong, and called me a liar and hung up in my face. My friend started to tell me about the phone conversation that she had with my mum prior. She didn't tell me out of respect for my mother because my mum asked her not to tell me about the phone conversation. My friend said that my mum was talking bad about me, my fiancé, my fiancé's family, and how I was planning my wedding. My friend was put in this awkward position. Ever since that trip, I've not spoken to my mum or sister, and they didn't show up to my wedding. I only get a text from my sister to tell me to pay both her and my mum's phone bill once a month, and that is it. In the comments, My eyebrows rose when your mum called your friend a little girl. Those are big words from someone who allegedly needed their trip paid for. Are you cutting them off financially? It's okay if you do. They don't treat you with love and care, so why should they receive it from you? OP says, I plan on cutting them off. The only thing left to cut off is this phone bill situation. I'm nervous about doing it because it's going to create more conflict that I don't need. I gotcha. Send them a text and or registered mail saying that you will no longer pay for their cell phone bills as of this date, and then mute them on your phone, in case they type anything incriminating and you need it for evidence, and then block them on social media. Get cameras for your property, don't answer the door if they stop by, call the cops if they escalate. They can't cause conflict if you're avoiding them. OP says, thanks for the advice. Excellent ad 1132 says, You tried your best, and so did your friend, and your piece of shit egg donor and shit sister ruined it. It's time to cut them off for a long while, at least until you forget how they treated you and gaslight yourself into thinking that it wasn't that bad. But for now, cut them off and do not pay for their phone bill. Since you're not family to them, why would you pay for anything of theirs? They already had you pay for the trip and their hotel stay, so I would say that you were done with their crap. Your mother totally ignored the fact that the bachelorette party was about you and not her. Did I miss something? Why would you pay their phone bills at all? OP says, It's something that I've been doing for 10 years since I was in college. My mother made that my responsibility when I was living with her and going to school. It was a real struggle to do when I was in college. She never took that responsibility back. As others suggested, it is time to stop paying her bill. Just tell her that you'll deduct the cost from her and her sister's airfare since she absolutely ruined your bachelorette trip. I hope your wedding was all you wanted it to be, without the drama twins, and you and hubby have many years of happiness. And now, on to the update. So thank you for all of the advice, commentary, and inputs. I wanted to follow up on the original post that I posted. 
So far, I have gone no contact with my mother and sister. I ended up getting a new phone line and phone number. I texted my sister to let her know that I will no longer be paying for her or my mother's phone bill anymore. I then cut off that phone and moved on with my new phone line. I blocked and removed them from all social media as well. Once I did that, my mother decided to appear and attempt to call me at my job, stating that there was an emergency and that she needed to speak with me. I told my colleague that I would not be answering the phone and that there is no emergency and to not answer my work phone line if she does call. After that, she has not made any more attempts. I believe she tried to call to bully me into paying their phone bill and to try to do the guilt trip and shame me like she attempted to do on the bachelorette trip, but I was not falling for it. I also cut off my sister's Apple Music, which I know she would be pissed about, and it just all felt so good. I also found out that my mother added her husband's phone installment plan to the bill a year ago without telling me, and that literally pushed me over the edge. I didn't notice it because it was an installment plan that only brought the bill up $35. That $35 a month adds up over time. This added up to me paying $500 for it before I cut everything off. I mean, who has their daughter paying for their husband's brand new iPhone 14? How does anyone sit there comfortable doing that to their own daughter? This I will never understand. It has been 7 months so far since I decided to go no contact. I can say that my life has been more peaceful with no drama. It has brought me and my husband closer together. I can truly say that I'm happy and starting to get back to being me again. My relationship with my mum and sister was toxic and put me in a really dark place. Everything that happened during that trip has opened my eyes and I'm looking forward to better things and I plan on redoing my bachelorette trip the right way. In the comments, Texas 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 1 says, I could have written this. I'm on month 4 of no contact with my mum and sister. Life is peaceful and drama free. And OP replies, You had issues with both? What made you make that decision? My sister is an avid COVID denier and believes that Democrats hook assaulted children to a machine to steal their adrenaline. Dumber than a rock. She involved family members in that nonsense online and then refused to apologize. It was the last straw to me. She can't be around my family or kids. Mother took up for her keyboard warrior daughter who sponges off her for almost 10 years now. That's the very short version and I should have cut them off 30 years ago. My life would have been more peaceful and less embarrassing. Peter095837 says, Life can be more peaceful and easier once you cut people off who are massively entitled and terrible. Cause damn, this mother really is full of entitlement, manipulation, and bigotry. I never met entitled people before, but I can't imagine how I would respond if I ever dealt with one. Good for OP at the end of the day. I've cut off my mother and it was the best decision in my life. I should have done it sooner, but it's better late than never. Quotes, asked my mum to be the maid of honour since I thought that it would help create a closer bond between us getting ready for the wedding. Oh, I just knew from this the rest was going to be a tyre fire. Mum absolutely was being a pill before this and OP asked her to be the maid of honour in the hope that it would rein in her behaviours. Quote, since I thought it would help create a closer bond between us and that was the red flag that told me that they were not close at all. It's like asking someone who you meet on the train to be your maid of honour because you want to be their friend, but worse. One of my cousins had a near complete stranger as a groomsman because his wife wanted an even wedding party. So while they were renting the suits, a dude that was in there was getting his son measured for prom and my cousin was talking to him and just invited him to be a groomsman. Our next post is by user Anon Annie 81877 titled, Am I wrong for who I chose to be my flower girl? My fiancé, 35 male, and I, 30 female, have been dating since I was 20. We got engaged last year and have been slowly planning an intimate wedding for February of 2024. We have a guest list of 35, close friends and family only, and we each chose two people to be groomsmen and bridesmaids. He's having his sister's son, 6, as the ring bearer, and I decided to have my sister's daughter, 4, as the flower girl. I have an amazing relationship with his family and a very strained relationship with mine. 
although it's getting better with my parents. I had posted an announcement on our wedding Facebook page about the choices. It was just a photo of the kids looking through the dresses and suits with their mom. Two hours later, I got a call from my mother asking where the photo was taken and if it was where I was getting my dress. I told her that it was them picking out their outfits for the wedding. She said, oh, that's cute, and then told me that she had to go to an appointment, so we wrapped up the conversation, and that was that. 30 minutes later, my phone rang from a number that I didn't recognize, so I ignored it. I don't pick up strange numbers. I saw they had left a voicemail, so I listened to it. It was my brother's wife. Brother is an abuser, so I don't speak to them unless forced to. She was livid, to say the least, yelling and crying about the fact that I didn't choose her son and daughter and that they would never forgive me and that I am no aunt to them. I chose to ignore this as I don't have a relationship with them and I don't owe them any sort of explanation. I then got a call from my brother, which I didn't answer either. He didn't leave a voicemail and I didn't call back. Two days later, there was a knock on my door and, who guessed it, it was my brother and his wife. She was demanding to know why I didn't pick their kids and why I gave some random kids their spots. I calmly responded that it wasn't their spot and they aren't random kids. She began crying hysterically and saying that her kids deserved it for me being such an awful person. I told them that her and her brother weren't even invited and they needed to get off my property. My brother was silent through this entire thing. I told my fiancé what had happened and when he got home from work, showed him our ring camera footage and showed him the voicemail. I turned off my phone for the rest of the day slash night and didn't turn it on until the morning. When I turned it on, I was bombarded with texts, calls, social media messages, and posts about how awful I was for punishing the children and how I went crazy on my brother and sister-in-law. I posted the ring camera footage and the voicemail and tagged everyone who made a post and sent me a text. I got several apologies, but I frankly didn't care. Our guest list went from 35 to 25 in a matter of minutes, and I am fine with it. My mother and father are mad about the situation slash drama, but are, for the moment, staying out of it and telling us to figure our own shit out. I still have family and friends and all of the brother and sister-in-law's flying monkeys harassing me about not wanting their kids in my wedding and that I'm a monster for doing this. So Reddit, am I wrong for punishing my niece and nephew and choosing my fiancé's niece and nephew to be a prominent part of our wedding? In the comments, Ren Wynn says, You're not wrong, and frankly, your sister-in-law sounds unhinged, but I don't think your parents are staying out of it as they say. If you don't have contact with your brother or sister-in-law and they aren't even invited, then how did they find out? And you're supposed to believe that them finding out a mere half an hour after your mother rang to ask you about it is just a wacky coincidence? Sounds more like your mother rang them straight after hanging up with you, shared the news and picture, and worked your sister-in-law up over it, hoping her grandkids would get a special place in the wedding too. Meaning brother and sister-in-law would also have to be invited. OP replies, My wedding Facebook page is public. They didn't know that they weren't invited until I told them. But you're right, that is exactly what happened. I don't think she worked her up though. My sister-in-law was always this crazy over anything since she's had her kids. It wasn't exactly surprising that she reacted to it this way, but I also hoped that she would maybe just realize that it's not up to her. So your brother wasn't invited and likely knows that and wanted his kids in a wedding that he couldn't be at? OP replies, he seemed pretty indifferent and was silent the entire time. It was his wife who was losing her shit over it. His wife doesn't know about him being an abuser and believes that since I had said in a post I would be sending out invitations to my immediate family, that it included them. Hang on, so the wife really has no idea why you don't see or speak to him. So this is actually surprising to her? Well then I get why she would be a bit surprised, and I'm sure actually hoped for an eventual relationship with you. OP says, Yup, she thinks that I'm always too busy to come around, or that I'm mad at my parents if I don't show up to family events and holidays. She made it clear that she doesn't believe abuse victims if she's close with abusers, when we had been close, which is a problem in itself, but not mine to try and fix. 
Edit to add, we did have a relationship which faded away as I was made the designated babysitter for them, unpaid, and when I started to say that I was busy or working, she slowly quit reaching out. That was around the same time I found out, slash therapy uncovered, about my brother's actions. And now, on to the update. I had a few messages asking, so I figured that I'd add it in here. The restraining order is in place. I got the call this afternoon. I posted a few days ago about the predicament that I was in with my family regarding my wedding. Well, in the three days since I posted, it has escalated far past what I ever thought. After I blocked everyone and uninvited people, I ended up deleting my wedding page and creating a private group chat with everyone who was still involved, which worked out perfectly. I told my mother that I was going low contact with her and my father after everything that happened, and she was of course upset and wanted to talk it out. I told her when she could admit that she was wrong and apologize, then we could. I went into work a couple of days later, yesterday, I work half remote, half in office, and got called into my boss's office immediately. He told me that he was getting emails and calls about me from different people and that he was putting me on leave until I get this figured out. I had sent him an email about the entire situation when it happened, so he's completely understanding of it and doesn't want it to affect my work. When I got home, my brother was waiting for me, alone. I sent a quick text to my fiancé telling him, my brother is here at the house, and then started recording as I got out of my car. I asked him what he wanted, and he told me that he wanted to talk and asked if we could go inside. I told him that we were fine talking in front of the house, and he rolled his eyes at me. He asked why I was excluding his children, and I honestly just about lost it. I asked him if he was seriously asking me that question, and if he truly thought I was that delusional. He started yelling at me that he's never done anything to me, and that I'm a filthy, no-good liar, and that it's a wonder my fiancé even wants me. I raised my voice and told him that he is an effing hypocrite and an abuser and that him and his wife are a match made in hell. He started walking towards me and I told him that if he steps one more foot, I'd be calling the police. I was honestly terrified. As he was walking to get in his car, he said, you know, it'd be a shame if something would have happened to your car on the way to the wedding, and he left. I waited until I couldn't see him anymore to make sure that he was actually leaving and then I called the cops. I gave them a copy of the video and all of the other evidence and asked if I could get a restraining order or a no contact order for the both of them. I'm not sure if it'll be possible, but here's hoping. I'm debating cancelling the wedding and going to the courthouse instead. Still having our close family there and my fiance's niece and nephew can still be a part of it. I was hoping to be able to update in February and tell you the wedding went perfectly, but I don't know if that's going to happen now. In the comments, Bulky Caterpillar 4240 says, If you can't get the restraining order through the police, talk to a lawyer. Your brother and sister-in-law are completely insane. He threatened your life, and that is a serious offense. You should consider sending that recording to your family and everyone invited to the wedding. And OP replies, Yes, they said that it was more than likely to be approved and issued in the next few days but they can't give us a for sure yes until they get the okay. If it isn't approved, I'll definitely go talk to a lawyer. Honestly, at that point, I would send a message to your mother stating that after being physically threatened by your brother, you and your husband have no choice but to go completely no contact with them and your brother and sister-in-law. If they show up, they'll be escorted off the property by police and charges pressed for stalking, harassment, and the threat of bodily injury. OP replies, I'm not going to tell my mother anything. I've already blocked my parents, and I've always been no contact with my brother until all of this happened. Jesus. I'd recommend switching venues if you can, but don't cancel your wedding in favor of a courthouse unless that's what you want. This is about you and your fiancé. Don't give your brother and his wife that power. No effing wonder you don't have a relationship with him slash them. No one is entitled to participation in a wedding except the people getting married. I hope this all works out for you. I'm sending you good vibes. OP replies, Courthouse is definitely last case scenario. I've been looking at a couple of different other venues, but I'm just not sure. Thank you for your kind words. I appreciate the good vibes. 
Opie's parents failed in protecting her growing up and into adulthood. What a mess. I hate it when the victims and the innocent are the ones to have to pay, while the wrongdoers don't even get slapped. Exactly. We're not taking sides, you both need to figure this out yourselves, is fine for an argument over what to have for lunch, it's decidedly not fine for one person threatening harm to another. It means, the current situation is within the realms of acceptability to me. Even if it's not ideal, it's not bad enough for me to want to change it. In cases of abuse, it means the abuse is acceptable, that they see no major problem with it. Doing nothing is not being fair to both parties. It means you side with the status quo. It sides with the abuser and against the victim in abuse cases. Pretending, or actually believing, that this relieves you of any culpability is just the disgusting, self-serving cherry on top. Anyway guys, that's where I'm going to end today's episode. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!